Welcome everyone. This is Brother Doug. I'm with the Waking by Yahoo Assembly today. Um, my mom is here with me. She's gonna be doing. She's here with me on my side, um, and Brother Dennis is also with us. Um, and so we're going to be doing a study called "What." Um, Aliens and Ascended Masters in the Scriptures. Do the Scriptures talk about this? So this is like a question for the title of our study. Are there aliens and Ascended Masters in the Scriptures? So we're going to start off with what are actually aliens. Aliens are demons. As spoken of in Revelation 16, 13, we're going to start there first. Um, aliens are demons, spirits of the dead giants. And we're going to show you other Scriptures that show that they're not fallen angels, as you've been taught. Okay, so we're going to go to scriptures here, right? So Revelation chapter 16, verse 13, which says, And I saw three unclean spirits, meaning three demons, like frogs, meaning they look like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon and the mouth of the beast, which is the anti-Messiah, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So the only biblical trinity you'll ever see in the Bible. It is the satanic trinity of the false prophet, the beast, and the dragon, a.k.a. Satan. So this is the only trinity we see ever in the Bible. That's literally there. So now we're going to continue on and go to some scriptures that, are, that will actually show why we believe that demons are the spirits of the dead Nephilim, the dead giants. Mm -hmm. um, first, I'm going to be going to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 18 in the Septuagint. It reads a little bit different in most of your Bibles because the Septuagint was a different manuscript of the Old Testament way, way, way before the Old Testament in our Bibles and would have had a different version of the Hebrew language, a much older version. So if you go to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 18, this is referring to the strange woman and um, warning us men not to go near a strange woman. It says, for she has fixed her house near death and guided her wheels near Hades, you know, Sheol, the grave, with the giants, it says in the Septuagint. So it's talking about the giants, you know, the dead giants in the bottomless pit. And that's where her house is. That's where a strange woman's house is. You go near her, you go into her, you know, you basically – physically go into her it's like going to the grave literally mm -hmm. so um and then we have job 26 verse 5 which this gets a little bit more specific here um when you read it in context so job 26 verse 5 which pretty much every version will read the same unless you have like a hallelujah scriptures which kind of puts it kind of weirdly in my opinion it says in the Septuagint here, shall giants be born from under the water and the inhabitants thereof. Now, the Hebrew word there in the Masoretic text um, that they translate for dead, okay, is actually considered to be rafa, which is the um, root word for rafaim, which is a tribe of giants. So, and it even says in the definition here, it says a ghost. So basically it's the spirit of the giants. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about the spirit of the dead giants in hell, mm -hmm. in Sheol, so in the pit. So that's just one verse we have here. Um, and then we have a couple more that have this same word Rapha in it. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 21, verse 16. So we're going again to the book of Proverbs. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16 says... A man that wanders out of the way of righteousness shall rest in the congregation of giants. And what they're doing here is they're translating the Hebrew word from your Old Testament, the Masoretic Old Testament that's in most Bibles, and we'll say a congregation of the dead. But if you look at the original Hebrew word that they're translating in English as dead, again, it's Rapha. It's the root word for Raphaim. So why do they just translate it as a dead person? You know, maybe they're trying to hide something. That would be my theory. 
Um, so it's actually talking about, I believe, all these verses are showing that demons or ghosts mm-hmm. are spirits of the dead giants. <clears throat> Isaiah 14, 19, I'll be shown here. And uh, we just have Sister Sally join us. So, uh, Sister Sally, we're reading from um, Isaiah 14, 19, and we're showing everyone right now how demons basically are uh, spirits of the dead giants. So, we're showing from the original Hebrew word Rafa here, and um, that is translated a lot of times as dead, um, you know, um, dead, death, a lot of times it's be translated into English, it's actually supposed to be um, talking about ghosts, like demons. See. All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Let's see here, it says, mm-hmm. yeah, many dead. So where it says many dead here, it's supposed to be, um, let me see here. Um, those that are slain through with the sword, gone down to the stones of the pit. Mm-hmm. As a carcass trodden under, let's see, branch. Let's see here. Abominable branch. The grave, abominable branch, thrust down with a sword and go down to the stones of the pit, a carcass. All right, that's weird. All right, I guess that's incorrect. They were trying to tell me that that's Rafa there, but I don't see it there. My bad about that. So we'll just ignore that for now. Isaiah 14, 19. Um, Isaiah chapter 26, verse 14 is supposed to have Rapha, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see here. Isaiah 26, 14. Yep, another place, dead. Making people think it's just talking about a dead person. Oh, no, actually, uh, where is it? Um, deceased, my bad. The word deceased there. So sometimes they'll translate Rafa as dead, deceased in your modern English Bibles. And it's actually talking about a spirit, a ghost. So it's talking about an unclean spirit that we know from the book of Enoch says that that's the spirit of the original Nephilim. So that was Isaiah 26, 14. Now we're going to be having two cross references here from the book of Enoch. And if you don't have a book of Enoch, I'll be putting it on my screen. So let me go to my file here. Enoch. This is a Hallelujah Scriptures version PDF of the book of Enoch. So I can actually look here. And so let me just zoom in. Please note, yada, 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 whatever. Let me try to zoom in a little bit. There we go. Now it's zoomed in. All right. So what is it? Chapter 15, verses 8, 9, and 11 of the book of Enoch. So we're going to go back here. So chapter 15. Now I'm using the Hallelujah Scriptures version because they actually restore the name of Yahuwah um, pretty faithfully here, trustworthily. So here we go. Chapter 15, verses 8. 9 and 11. So let's start at verse 8 here, which says, And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh. What does that mean? The spirits and the flesh. Well, angels are spirits. The spirits and flesh, the angels and the human women, shall be called evil spirits, meaning that the giants shall be called demons. After they died, the spirits that are in them will be called demons. Upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Then again, it says, it reiterates the next verse, evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies, meaning the bodies of the giants, because they are born from men and from the set-apart watchers. Watchers is a class of angel. As is their beginning and primal origin, they shall be evil spirits again. You didn't get it the first time, three different times. It's saying they shall be evil spirits on the earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. So the spirits that we just read about in Revelation 16, 13 were the spirits of the dead giants. As for the spirits of the heavens, in the heavens shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of earth, 
which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger, and thirst, and cause offenses, meaning cause stumbling blocks. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them. So they're jealous of us. Demons are jealous of us. That's why they constantly attack us, oppress us, because we have an expected end where it says in the book of Jeremiah, do not fear because I give you an expected end. You know, we have expectancy. They don't. They're, they, they have no hope. No eternal life. They're jealous of us. So that's what demons are. They're the spirits of the j dead giants like Goliath. He had a demon in him. Once he died, his spirit has been roaming around on the earth since then. Um, so the second part of the study is called, What are the Ascended Masters? And just to give you kind of a visual, because people will say, what the heck is the Ascended Master? Okay, and the false religion of the new age they have these beings these so-called um beings from other planets called ascended masters okay and what do you know good old jc is one of them what do you know what do you know of course of course so this is where we get the false image for the messiah from the new age and here's another image here that they have let me see if I can scroll. Yeah. So this, uh, they call it the Sananda JC. And so this, this is one of their ascended masters. A lot of them are blonde haired, blue eyes, which I kind of find is funny because that's what Hitler wanted to create in World War II. So I, I wonder if he was a worshiper of these so-called ascended masters. Basically what these guys are, as you can see on the shared screen here, they're, their images are pretty much like humans. Well, because fallen angels, when we get into the end times and you'll see the great deception coming, fallen angels will appear as men or as the new age know them, ascended masters to promote the false new age religion. There will be a new age Messiah. Okay. He's going to claim to be JC all along. He's going to appear like Caesar Gregoria. All right, we'll be right back. We got to just take a short intermission. We're back, everyone. We took a short little intermission. So, okay, so just a tiny, tiny, quick, quick recap. Fallen angels will appear as men, meaning human men, or ascended masters to promote the false New Age religion. Genesis 19.11 says, The two angels that went to Sodom and Gomorrah to rescue Lot looks like men. And we'll actually read Genesis 19.11 here. So I'm going to go to my ESORD program and read Freya where it talks about that they looks like men. So angels, whether Yahuwah's angels or Satan angel, Satan's angels, whether they're good or bad, they both have the same abilities. Mm -hmm. They have equal abilities to transform into whatever form they like. Um, Let's see here. It says, mm -hmm. yeah. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they were wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, has you here any besides son-in-law and your daughters and your sons and your daughters and whatsoever you have in your city, bring them out of this place. So it's describing the angels as men. See, in verse 12, the men. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the first verse of this chapter, even says, gives you the context. The first verse of this chapter says, and there came two angels to mm -hmm. Sodom. So the angels in this chapter are being described as men. So let's see here. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 2, Paul warns us that we might have entertained angels mm -hmm. unaware that we never even knew. Like you're entertaining someone at your home. Um, you're doing something nice for someone you meet. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe someone that's homeless or something like that. Mm -hmm. It could be an angel unaware. 
And that's what it says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. Be not for, forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Mm -hmm. So again, so Paul's trying to say to you, you might not even realize they were an angel. Why? Because they can look like men. <laughs> so 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 says, Satan can transform into an angel of light. And if we actually go to that scripture here, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, for if he that come, oh, whoops. That's verse four, my bad. <laughs> um, and do and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. Now, what's interesting to note is that. In other places where Paul talks about ministers are not always referring to human beings. Yahuwah actually made his angels be ministers of salvation. So sometimes when Paul says ministers, he's not exactly referring to us sometimes. Sometimes he's actually referring to messengers, you know, celestial messengers. So that's something to keep in mind with the context here. So he might be talking about Satan's angels even being no great thing for his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. So just keep that in mind if you're if any New Agers are watching this or listening to this. These ascended masters that you think are helping you achieve quote unquote godhood, they're most likely Satan's angels. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind there. So, and none of us can reach Godhood, okay? We we can't be ascended or resurrected from our carnal bodies without the Messiah, without his sacrifice. We cannot be resurrected. So there's no such thing as self-ascension or self um no, they call it they call it deityhood. They call it becoming your own God, which actually is the lie of the garden. You will be as you know, G-O-D-S, knowing good and evil. So that's what Satan promised Adam and Kua, Adam and Eve, that they would basically be their own mighty ones. They would be their own deities. They would basically be able to worship themselves. Deification, self-deification. It's called, it's called self-deification. Gnosticism, that, that's, that's what Gnosticism is, self-deification. You believe through knowledge, through the more knowledge you obtain, you deify yourself. That's so. That's another false religion that pretty much the New Age is just a new way to look at Gnosticism or uh, or Satanism in a way because Satanists, you know, they claim they worship themselves. So, so anyway, but. Um, Here's another verse that talks about angels, the, the angels that Mary Magdalene saw at Yahushua's tomb in Mark 16, 5 to 6, looks like young men, he even says it. So we're going to look at Mark chapter 16, verses 5 to 6. I'm sorry, I'm going really, really fast, but we have a lot of scriptures to get to. So I'm sorry, viewers and listeners, but we got very little time to work with on these meetings. We only have 40-minute intervals here, mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into, oh, whoops. Wait. Five, six, six, oh, oh, five, six. I'm sorry about that. Thanks, Mom. I'm sorry about that. And entering into the sepulcher, which is just a fancy Greek right. word for tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side. So they're calling this angel a young man. Okay. Clothed in a long white garment. And they were affrighted or they were afraid. They feared him. And he said unto them, Be not frightened. You seek Yahushua of Nazareth, who was impaled. He is risen. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. Then so that's Mark chapter 16, verses 5 to 6. Now if you go, I have a little footnote here by this bullet point. This is the same instance with the same people, the two Marys that you'll find in John chapter 20, verses 11 to 14, which tells you they're angels, even though it describes them here as young men. 
So there's no contradiction. It's just the fact they appeared as young men. John chapter 20, verses 11 to 14. But Mary or Miriam stood without at the sepulcher. Again, tomb, sepulcher, same thing. Weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb and saw two angels in white. Again, white robes, white. Sitting with the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Yahusha had lain. And they saw unto her, Woman, they said unto her, I'm sorry, why do you weep? She said unto them, because they have taken away my rabbi, my master, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Yahusha standing and knew not that it was Yahusha, because obviously Yahusha disguised himself. You'll see that in other accounts in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, where he's walking with the disciples and they don't know they're talking to him after he's resurrected like he right. disguised himself right. physically so they so he kept asking them, they're like what what are you new here you don't know what's happened and that he died and he was supposed to resurrect and they're kind of like doubting at that point peter's talking to him the heck i had a weird someone's phone was vibrating this weird that's all right all right, Luke chapter 24, verse 4 is the other footnote I have for Mark 16, 5 to 6, to prove that the angels were perceived as men or thought to be men because they looked like men. And it says, and it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Again, this is, this is kind of pointing to our resurrection, what we're going to look like, those that believe in Yahushua and keep the commandments of the Father, and worship the Father in spirit and truth, Yahuwah Almighty. This is essentially a foreshadowing, okay? So we're going to be humans that actually are in shining garments. That is the incorruption that Paul talks about. So that's like kind of like a cool foreshadowing. Okay, we're down to like nine minutes here. I'm going to try to fit the last two. Uh, we only have two verses left or two cross references left, so this should be quick. Acts chapter 1, verses 9 to 11 is another one. Okay, and it says, And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their, sh out of their sight. So now Yahushua is about to be received by the Father here mm -hmm. in verse 9. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, Two men stood by them in white apparel. So angels, again, standing by the apostles. When the apostles are watching this, you got angels on earth looking like men, basically. Which also said, you men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Like, why do you marvel, basically? This same Yahushua is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. And I believe this is um, a partial fulfillment of Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4, which I kind of want to read just real quick for people that don't know about it, especially if there's Jews watching this, to show there's proof of the Old Testament of this happening, the Son of Man descending and ascending, that the Messiah was supposed to be the Son of the Father. Okay, that's who the Messiah is. That's his character. He is the Son of the Almighty. He's not just a regular mortal. Okay. So Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4 says, Who has ascended up into heaven? Mm -hmm. Now, this is before Yahushua was even born on earth, mind you. This is the book of Proverbs, right. King Solomon. Mm -hmm. Or descended. Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If you can tell. So you can take this multiple ways that it's claiming that the father ascended or descended or that, it, that it's talking about the son ascending or descending. Either way, I believe what we just read in Matthew fulfills Proverbs 30 verse 4. Mm -hmm. So it not fully, actually let me correct myself, not fully, it partially fulfills. Well, actually no, it fully fulfills because he descended in the form of a baby. Mm -hmm kind of in a way so and then he bet he ascended well yeah depending on your interpretation of the whole virgin birth and stuff like that it, you, you would believe whether it's fully 
fulfilled or partially fulfilled. Either way, he ascended. That's partially fulfilling this verse. Mm -hmm. And even at the minimum, it would be fully fulfilled when he returns, when Yahushua returns. So Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4 shows you who the Messiah actually is. It's the Son of the Father, the Son of the Almighty. He has to ascend into heaven, descend from heaven. So anyway, sorry about that confusion there. But um, I was just trying to show two different interpretations of that verse because I know people have different interpretations of that. All right, so First Enoch chapter 17, verse 1 says, and this is the last one that we have for the day, the day, and it says, And they took and brought me to a place in which those who were like flaming fire. So these angels look like a flaming fire. And when they wanted, meaning when they desired to, they appeared as men. So they can appear as a man, meaning they can transform their form into the form of a mortal human. So that's just another proof of that. And I have a little little note at the end that says of this study, it's a little conclusion, uh, kind of a question I'm asking the viewers and listeners. Maybe this is the reason for such movies as Transformers. Think about the lyrics to the intro to the cartoon show the you know the intro transformers the kids uh the children's cartoon superhero show one of the lyrics says robots in disguise daniel 243 maybe iron in the clay iron will mingle with the seed of men so again that's what happened in genesis 6 1 to 4 you had the sons of Elohim, the angels in the days of noah or you know actually probably in the days of Jared, mingling with the seed of mankind, human women, women, daughters of Adam. So hopefully this study was a baraka to y'all. Um, any last words, um, Brother Dennis, Sister Sally, for the viewers? Uh, that, that was pretty good. Uh, I agree with it. Yeah. Anything you uh, thought was interesting, Sally, or possibly wanted to add? Maybe I forgot. I thought the whole your whole um, whole explanation was very good, and I enjoyed it. Thank you. Oh, no problem. All right. Well, I guess that's it for the for today's study. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, for the viewers and the listeners, if you're interested in joining our assembly you know um please contact me or my sister shoshana rogers we both have youtube pages um we both have multiple facebook group pages we actually have awakened by yahuwah uh, assembly in yahuwah almighty and yahusha messiah page please look for that on facebook that's that's our group page where i put all of our studies on for people on facebook that might not be on youtube seeing our stuff um my sister shoshana has for the lost sheep um, dot com page on Facebook so you can find some of her stuff on there. Please reach out to us if you need fellowship. Um, if not, then please subscribe and if you click the notification bell on my channel, you'll be notified every time we do a study. So thank you for joining us. Shalom.